just knows. Good morning. This is Plan to Win with Mark Henderson Leary and my good friend Brad Fryer. How are you this morning? Man, I'm doing good. How about yourself? Fantastic. You feeling like nothing could go wrong? Like everything is lined up? Smooth nothing. sailing, baby. Smooth sailing. Smooth sailing. Bulletproof. Ready for anything. Bulletproof. Technology is a brilliant, brilliant thing. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're only, what, 10 10 seconds, 30 seconds late getting this going off the ground because of headphone internet connection issues. But that's that's yeah. the world we're in, man. So that does, that's, we could talk about lots of different things. We had lots going on last week. I was at a conference. You led a great session that I sat in on, which was wonderful. I'd love to kind of unpack that a little bit. And then, But I mean, I think thematically, technology is a part of our world from a leadership, management, selling, everything. Uh, and I sit there in those moments where like, wow, this is amazing. I can connect with a team in North Carolina with like their next door. And then yeah. it's like, I need to go live. What's with this technology? <laughs> you know, like, why won't it work? You know, internet connection. Yeah, it really, it's a blessing and a curse. I mean, it really is. You know, the, the technology makes us uh, so connected that you're expected to always be available and that the technology should always be on point. But that's not how it works. So, um, you know, yeah, I guess you have to prepare for the unknown and, you know, not get frazzled, not get uh, flustered. Is the game changing? Do you think like, like, I think at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, you were 30 minutes late to a meeting because the internet wouldn't work. Everybody was like, well, I wasn't doing anything anyway. You know, you're right on time. Let's, let's totally normal. No, you know, any kids involved. That's great. The dog were outside, whatever. That's, there was no rules anymore, but now technology is expected. Are you expected to have your technology stuff together, buttoned down with no glitches? Yeah, I think you're expected to, but I think there's also a, a lot of leniency given when it doesn't, because I think we've all had those experiences where something went wrong, you know, a camera, audio, video, you know, whatever, something wasn't working. And so I think people have, have, uh, have relaxed that, that tension. But also, I mean, the commonplace now is for a spouse or a child to walk in behind you or a dog to jump in the lap or, you know, you to be sitting with the kitchen in the background. You know, that's whereas a year ago, if you were sitting on a Zoom call and a spouse walked behind you, that would have seemed unprofessional. Yeah, That would have seemed, you know, out of place. But now, I mean, I've got I've got training sessions where. You know, I've, I've got a guy who very commonly has his daughter sitting in his lap, you know, and yeah, she's, it, yeah. you know sh- she's watching and, and honestly, nobody thinks anything of it. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's become somewhat commonplace. Well, there's nothing I, I like I mean, about obviously, if, obviously a factor of that is because people are working from home now. So there's sure. some, some expectations there, but yeah, I don't think people, people aren't making a big deal out of it. Yeah, I like at least what this could could mean because I've always admired the stories of the parents who t- brought their kids to work and got them involved in all those conversations and, and taught them things that are very difficult to learn in school. And my professional life hasn't always made it that easy to do that. And so I do think it's nice to, to think there's one more channel, one more ability to get uh, my child involved in what I do and in and, and, and ways that are appropriate to them. I think that's I think that's a cool yeah. evolution. No, I, I would say there's probably more pressure on the facilitators than there are the participants. And so, you know, if you or I are conducting an event, I think there are expectations that we're going to have our stuff together a little bit better than the the folks who are attending or participating. Um, That's a great that point. Could, that could just be the pressure I add on myself to make sure that I have it right. But, uh, you know, I, I would think that there's a certain level of professionalism expected from the, the facilitator. Now, once again, though, you and I both work with companies in an ongoing uh, cadence. And so, you know, for me, as long as that first session goes off without a hitch, I think I've earned the, uh, earned a little bit of latitude. So if something happens in a subsequent event, eh, probably not that big a deal. Um, you know, that EO event that I did last week, the, the, uh, the projection system, we just couldn't get the clicker work in and the, the, the host facility didn't have one that worked from the podium. And so, you know, it was very wonky. Um, And although it creates some, some turbulence in the event, 
yeah, I don't think people. I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't. I, I totally didn't forgot about that. that people, I, 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 yeah. Yeah, I thought that. I thought it was a great event. I remember. I remember yeah. the moments now as you brought it up, but it was not in my long term memory of, of how the event went. Yeah, I probably used more profanity during those glitches than I should have, but you know that's going to happen. <laughs> I don't know. I thought you were about it, right. Maybe a little, maybe a little light, to be honest. Okay. Well, I I did preface the group. You know, I said, hey, look, EO has always been an R-rated group. Has anything changed? <laughs> no, it certainly hadn't. It certainly well, hadn't. So, so let's compare. So we were talking about virtual experiences, and and I think there's a lot of expectation of how the digital remote world has has evolved. But yeah. but the, it's it's changing very quickly, especially mm-hmm. down here in in Texas in Houston, where when when things can open up they are opening up yes. and to me it's giving me this sense of like it it's even it's a, the pendulum is swinging the other way to the point mm-hmm. where it, I, it looks a little unpredictable to me to 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 know exactly what that pendulum is going to do to again upset the sense of normalness yeah. Because we, you think we're going back to where we were with the expanded opportunities and, and options of digital, but I'm like, I'm not so sure. I think there's a, I think there's a little bit of inertia that's going to cause people to want to do something even different in the, uh, in the physical world. How that was, I have to assume that was the biggest physical event you'd been to in a, in a year or more. Oh, absolutely. But, without a doubt. How did that feel by comparison to all the digital stuff you'd been doing? You know, I, for me, having having done it for so long, it felt fantastic. I mean, it, it's hard to it's hard to generate that much energy and that much enthusiasm sitting sitting in a chair behind a monitor. But you get that many people in a room, and the energy's up, and you know everybody's having fun, and everybody's excited to be there. And I th- I thought the energy was fantastic. I mean, I got in the car after that two hour event, and I was just like, whoa. You know, I was just spent because I had had, I, you yeah. know, I put so much energy into it. And it's, it's very different doing it in person than, uh, than behind a, 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 a computer. Yeah. So do you, I, mean, I think bef- maybe the day before that, it would say you, we probably would have agreed that we can do a lot of amazing things, a lot of amazing things digitally that would have been mm-hmm. on the, on the same scale. Mm-hmm. Having done that event, you know, comparing side by side, you're like, oh, you know, I can do digital, I can do in person, whatever. Or are you yeah. starting to feel like, Man, in person. <laughs> oh, I, without question, I prefer in person. I mean, I, yeah. I, I think I think personality comes through more in person. I think the the inner the uh, exchange, you know, even when it's just a little sidebar glance at someone sitting at the first table, and you know, having a little under the breast statement to that person that's intended as kind of a, a rib or a shot. You know, I mean, those little those little interpersonal moments are very difficult to do virtually. Yeah. Um, and so, I, yeah, I, I really like that. But also I think that when you're in person, I mean, we were in a big ballroom and, you know, being able to kind of walk around and, and you know, my opening story. So here's a prime example of how it differs. So I got there, what, an hour early and I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces that are coming in. I'm meeting some new people you know, have a, a, a great conversation with John, uh, with James uh, um, about his new business. And my opening story, my opening joke included uh, a story about a guy who had just been given a bad uh, diagnosis from his doctor. Well, you know, the conversation I'd had with James just before, um, he, he, always, he started this company that does uh, concierge uh, medicine. And they do this extensive 400-page assessment of, of everything about you and your uh, physical wellness and yada, yada, yada. And so I was able to tie that into my story, right? You know, Hey, I had yeah, a friend call sure. me and he just got finished with James diagnostics program. He got this 400 pay- and the doctor gave him really bad news because of the information that James shared with him last night. That's something that you can't do virtually. Yeah. I would have never had that conversation with James gotten to, you know, gotten to, uh, to catch up with him. Um, you know, Saul, Saul, Barbara and Josh and um, Russ and I mean so many people that I hadn't seen and you just that that interpersonal exchange is something that you just don't have virtually. Yeah, I had a similar kind of realization at the conference I I was at the a couple of days later and that was that there was a thousand people in the room <laughs> which just was mind blowing. It was a big room. Normally could hold two thousand. Uh, and there were 400 people virtual. It was a hybrid conference. And I thought well that's really cool. And after having done been there for a little while, 
I actually I went into a room where there was a virtual presenter and a virtual participant on the screen. And it turns out one of my clients was, was up on the screen and I was like, Oh, cool. There she is. And so I, you know, I was like, I texted her, Hey, I saw you. And uh, that was, that was really cool. And then the, later in this, that day, I realized I was not going to run into her. Yeah. And I, so I was going to run into anybody who was there. And yeah. there were 400 people who were having a great experience kind of with themselves, but those 400 people who were virtual were not going to run into any of the people in that yeah. facility. And I, and yeah. I was like, wow, this is two universes very close together, but not, it, not actually together. Correct. Correct. Yeah. There's, there's a lot, there's a lot that comes from that interaction, you know, and, and, you know, thinking about getting back in the groove of conferences and, um, and, and, you know, leadership meetings. I mean, how much learning takes place, you know, over a cocktail at the end of the day or over dinner or over breakfast or during the breakout sessions or during the breaks themselves where you're just talking to someone and you start talking about challenges or obstacles you're faced with and they start talking about how they've overcome them or, you know, um, you know, at the end of at the end of my talk, I had you know, a couple of people come up and ask questions about specific things that I talked about that day. You know, that's, that's, that's something that although people have the opportunity to do that virtually, you know, they can shoot you an email, they can shoot you a text, they can throw it up in the chat, but I think people are opportunistic. Yeah. And so given the chance to ask a question, they'll do it. But if, if it requires an extra effort and eh, maybe that question is not that big a deal. Yeah. Do you think this dynamic is going to pull back a lot of what's virtual? Like, I mean, Zoom calls. I mean, and I still, from my perspective, uh, the conference is a totally different thing than a Zoom call. If somebody says, let's get, let's, get, let's get together for lunch or coffee, I'm very likely mm -hmm. to say no. Because I don't want to drive across town, even just the repetitive expense of, of outside, uh, you know, outside meals. And like I've, I've, my budget has been totally rewritten for the last year. And the, the line of, of eating out has gone down so far. It's like, yeah. wow, that's a huge number. And so I'm kind of resistant to the idea of everything going back to everything's a lunch, everything's a coffee. Like I, it's the time. I actually just yeah. don't have the time anymore. Yeah. But that being said, so where's the, what's the, what's the dynamic and the edge between like an introductory conversation, 30 minutes, let's do that zoom, uh, versus, you know, I only trust people in person and, and, and conferences are just not the same. A virtual conference is fine for a half day yeah. thing, but if you're going to spend a couple of days together, you really should be in the room. What do you think that's going to do for, for selling conversations and, and things like that? You know, I think, I think it's going to do two things. Number one is I think it's going to allow us to touch our clients more in a, in a more personal way. Um, because in the past, you either had to go out to see them. And so if you had customers all over the country, it was very difficult to get in planes, trains, and automobiles and see people on a regular basis. But with Zoom, you, if, if you've got a customer, rather than getting in a plane, train, and automobile, you can reach out to them once a month for a 15 or 20 minute Zoom call where you're seeing someone face to face, you're, you're, you're having an exchange and it's better than the telephone because remember zoom, zoom isn't just a telephone call with an image, right? There's a lot of technology that you can utilize to share screens, to share um, data, to, to have, uh, to have a, a slide deck prepared. That's going to, you know, do kind of a presentation. I mean, there's a lot you can do with it. So I think it's going to allow us to touch people more frequently in a more personal way than just calling them on the telephone. Um, but I've never been a, I'm, you know, even prior to COVID, I was never a big lunch meeting guy. If we're going to meet, mm, yeah. I would want to have a meeting, right? I feel like, you know, A, I have hard, I have, I'm, I'm, I have a little bit of hard hearing. And so when you put me in a restaurant with a lot of ambient noise, I, I, I have a hard time hearing what the other person's saying. And so business lunches, have never been something that I've, I was a fan of. Um, Me either. I, it, somewhere in there, I just was. I just realized that I would spend more time and get less done. And yeah. I, I, if, I think it was if a sales wedge. Have, it's a sales wedge. Like, hey, you got to eat yeah. lunch. Get you know, get out of the office, and I'll take you to lunch. But yeah. for some, if I'm actually going to try to do something and stated and intentional, lunch is the worst time to do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's 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 very difficult to have a good flow because of the noise, because of the interruptions. Now, if you want to go to lunch just to catch up, just to say hi, I'm not opposed to that, right? Coffee or lunch, breakfast, whatever, just to kind of connect uh, personally, that's great. But having a having a productive business meeting yeah. over lunch, I, I find it difficult. Um, now, there's some industries where 
you know, I was, I was talking to a good friend the other day and, and she does um, um, medical sales and you're not going to get in front of a doctor during, and she, and she was really struggling with this. She says, you know, the only time the doctors will see me is if I bring lunch, otherwise they're not seeing me. And I said, well, we have to understand their world, right? They're, they're billable, you know, they're, their hours are billable hours. And so they're not going to want to take an hour out of prime billable time to sit with a salesperson. So, you know, sit, you know, bringing lunch into their office and sitting down over lunch is probably good in that industry because their hours are slotted for customers yeah. or patients. And yeah. so, you know, that that's completely understandable. You know, in our worlds, I would say that's not the case. Um, so, you know, I do think Zoom and virtual selling is going to be here to stay because you can you can become more efficient with your time. But I don't think it's going to replace the interpersonal connectivity. Yeah. So the, the theme that I kind of picked out of what you said there is that we've got new modes that do different different things. And especially what you said about the doctor's office, you have to be aware as a, as a leader of your organization, maybe the visionary, you've got to understand your client, your customer, your base. If you're, if you're the, if, if you're a sales rep, still you, you have the same kind of thing, right tool, right job, which means mm -hmm. you better understand the job, which mm -hmm. is who, who, who is your, your client, customer, patient, what do they need? And, and you're going to have to fit into that and make sure you're using the right tool for the outcome you're trying to create, which is not the same thing exactly as doing what they tell you. <laughs> you, you may have to understand what really works and push back if somebody's trying to get you to go back into the traditional seller dance of like, you know, you know, I'm going to tell you 10 extra steps that are just going to waste your time and keep you off my back. That's right. Uh, but that mindset, I mean, I, I have a, I have a, a surgical center and, uh, and then the, the doctor was like, all right, these full day sessions we're going to do together. Obviously these happen on the weekend. Right. <laughs> and I was like, uh, example. Yeah. occasionally they do, uh, but not for very long. And I could see the rest of the room who was not, uh, physicians were like, mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I like gave him a little time and we came back <laughs> and it was like, yeah, Monday, the, the 16th will work. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the doctor's that, you know, mindset was totally one thing. Yeah, he's he's thinking billable hours, right? Yeah, you know, he's yeah. he's got only so many hours in the day to see patients, and he's going to want to stack them up as as much as he can. Yeah, and, and I respect that. I, I totally get that. So, um, but no, I think I think uh, I think Zoom can be very very beneficial for everyone moving forward. But um, you know, I, I wouldn't use it as a place to hide. Um you know, a place to create a comfort zone, I would use it as a way to enhance what I'm doing. Yeah. So uh, to me, the, the hardest part of this, the subtle message in this is that it's, a, we're still in an evolution. Mm -hmm. And oh, as somebody oh, yeah. who still still struggles with the disruption that comes with the every I mean, I'm, I'm doing before the pandemic, everything I did was in person. Now it's kind of like sometimes it's virtual, sometimes it's not and occasionally it's hybrid, which I absolutely hate the hybrid situation. But sometimes we have to do it anyway. Uh, and the, what, the disruption that I underestimated was reorienting before each situation, like what's in play, I, I've added a new tool. I, so you talked about digital experience isn't just a picture. It's like, you know, there's mm -hmm. content sharing, and there's different ways to content share. And I've got different websites that do different types of things. And so every, every so often, I find myself adding a new tool or taking an old tool out. And the ch constant change is very disruptive to me because I like to do really deep content work. And so and I get I get I might get kind of thrown off by like, yeah, Oh, I'm going to give you a tool that I've never even used before. We're going to try it together. Or I just am afraid to try it. I'm like, I think this will be helpful, but I don't want to change my old rhythm. So yeah. as anybody in an organization, you're communicating with your teams, you are going to have to experiment and th put some new things into the mix and throw some old things out. And as you get to good habit that works pretty well right now, six months from now, that might be old thinking and you're going to have to throw out those amazing new tools because they're not new anymore. And, and, mm -hmm. and you, you may have to update your sales process to uh, we do a zoom call here every single time. Uh, and, or, or we don't ever do that anymore because it's constantly evolving, right tool, right job. And this is, this is managing your teams. This is, are you spending time in person with your folks? Are you doing, you know, do you have far flung teams that you're doing zoom instead? But I do think over the next at least six months, probably a full year, 
where it'll be because I think new technologies and new things you learn will be coming out. It's it's the name of the game is don't take anything for safe. You need to go back to the well and and look at your processes and your and your modes and, and ask yourself, is this the most efficient, most effective way to be doing this kind of communication, knowing what we now know? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah, and that is going to your point, right? It's going to continue to evolve. Um, you know, I think creating good practices with Zoom is important, right? Getting getting your your customers and your prospects comfortable utilizing the tool. I know there's a lot of people that are hesitant to to suggest that we use Zoom, but I'll tell you, I haven't had a meeting in I don't know ten months that I didn't just send a Zoom link. Yeah. As, as the meeting invite. Right now, granted, if someone jumps on and they don't have access to a camera or they don't turn their camera on, that's fine. I'm not going to not going to hold it against them, but I'm sending a Zoom link out for every single meeting. Uh, if they jump on with the camera, which 95 percent of the time they jump on with their camera. Um, most of the time, you know, it's it's, you know, showing just the top of their forehead or, <laughs> you know, but but, you know, but that's OK. And if they choose not to turn on their camera, that's okay too. But I'm going to assume that that's how we're going to do business, that it's yeah. going to be a via Zoom. So that's interesting because I, I, I was doing the same thing and I, I just sort of, def- to me, it was kind of an assumption. I was like, okay, yeah. now we have Zoom as a norm. It's so easy. My assistant can send it out. It's quick. It's Don't even think about it. I've had a few calls for a number of reasons where there's confusion or something where it's been a phone call. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, it's okay. I'm, I'm disrupted by this. And I, what I've found is that it's actually kind of, it's different in a, in a potentially good way. It's, uh, and I think that the, the science is, is saying that uh, there's a lot more to pay attention to. And, and you have to pay attention to your, your facial expression and your room and uh, am I dressed yeah. properly and am I standing yeah. looking confident. And in a phone call, you don't have to, no attention, 0% attention goes to any of that. And so you can just, you could literally, I'll do it. I'll literally close my eyes and listen very carefully to what person, someone is saying. And so if, if I'm on a Zoom call with you, I can't, it's going to look really weird if I'm like, okay, say that again, Brad. <laughs> but on a phone call, I would actually do that. It's like, okay, I'm getting distracted. I just really want to hear what this person is yeah. telling me so I can go inward and process it. And so yeah. I do think there's a, an actual use for the, the traditional non-video phone call for the time yeah. being. It, it may go the way of the dodo here pretty soon entirely, but for right now, I think it's <laughs> go the truly, way of the dodo. I, yeah, I, I do think, well, uh, I do. Th- my problem is I'm back here putting usually whenever I'm on a phone call. So, you know, I, at least with the zoom, I'm dialed in and completely focused in, you know, when, when I'm on a long telephone call, I'm usually standing up, walking around to make sure that I'm, you know, the, the creative side of my brain isn't getting distracted. See, I don't, I don't think that's out of the question for the future either. I think that you get higher and higher resolution cameras and you set up your office to be that kind of stage where you could literally walk around and talk to somebody and, and have that conversation. And maybe, maybe the camera's yeah. following you around while you do that. Because I think that's kind they of cool. They have that I, now. I can, I can, well, certainly they do that in, in very high definition, uh, full immersion uh, type, of, type of things. And my session, I kind of do that. I, like when I have a session, I've got a camera that zooms in and out so I can get the whiteboard in. But yeah. it's not quite to the point where, like, like if I'm not care- careful and it's too zoomed out, I, I look way in the distance. Yeah. Uh, so the idea there's, there's that you can technology. feel like you're in the room, though. There's a technology I saw uh, demoed a few months ago. And it's basically an iPad on a, on a pole and a stand with legs. Mm-hmm. And the, uh, the presenter wears, um, uh, I don't know, uh, a lanyard with a, a microphone on it. But the microphone has a chip in it that the uh, the head of the pod- of the the stand follows everywhere it goes. Mm-hmm. And so, if you're walking back and forth, it follows you as long as you have the, the the mic on. The interesting thing is, is that eventually we'll we'll go to a hybrid mode, to where you know we can host events in person for the majority, but then people who can't be here they can they can uh, stream in. But that kind of technology would be great because you know it. You want to get the cl- you want the people in cyberspace to feel like they're part of the classroom. Yeah. And so if if you've got this device that will follow the mic, you know, if, if someone asks a question, I can throw the mic or you know hand the mic off, and the and the head follows to that person while they speak, hands it back to me, and then I then I speak. And so the the people in in, in cyberspace they they get a feel for the layout of the room and what's going on and who's there and 
So I think there's going to be a lot of that that comes into play. That yeah, so you're right. There is a lot of that in, in, in existence. I've done a, a lot, of, some f- amount of work with that audio video technology for conferencing and that, and it's been very expensive and it's not been very quick and it's designed to be as functional enough as it can, as it had to be for bringing outside people into a conference in, in, in a, in a way that was acceptable. I, I think the game has really changed with, because uh, that was a, that's a conference room, right? That's a, either a conference room or a live venue where you're trying to somehow get some equipment to uh, pull in co- people conferencing and, and remote attendees to a lecture or something like that. Yeah, we're this is close. This is personal. This is an individual whose eyes you're looking at now, and it's kind of going the other way. It's like you know, how can I make this experience of being close and personal a little less tethering to my chair. And yeah. I, th- I think a lot of that technology you described is going to go in, but I think it's going to skip the tags. I think it's going to write to m- c- computer vision. It's already happening. A lot of the things that I use right now are computer yeah. vision and it just knows what a face looks like. And so it's just finding me. And I think with better internet connection, which continuing to get better and better and better and cheaper cameras for higher and higher resolution, the idea of having or maybe bigger screens, I don't know what's going to have to change that game to make it feel like I could have more of your world where you just get mm-hmm. up and you just jump to a standing or you sit down and, and you don't have to worry much about uh, where you're sitting. I think yeah. that'll that'll change the game, if, especially if people are doing this all day long. Uh, people are going to want to stand and walk around, and you know, I, I think that'll change the game for sure. No doubt, no doubt. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. But I, I think it's going. I think it's going to be an add, uh, an adder at the end of the day versus the detractor. Um, you know, the, the technology. I mean, the technology has advanced five years in the last ten months, twelve months for sure. Sure. And um, so I think it's going to I think it'll enhance the the experience. I think it also is going to help people create that work life balance that maybe they struggled with before. Um, you know, my brother was a, a prime example. He's a hundred and fifty thousand mile a year kind of traveler, um, and he would travel coast to coast, and he was always on the road. And he hasn't had to travel. Um, yeah. And they've been doing a lot of virtual, and their business is growing. And so yeah. it's going to be very difficult to justify going back to spending, you know, what, uh, 180 days in a hotel room a year. Yeah, those are great stories. And I think at every, every, every business I work with has a different situation on that. A piping and insulation company who is, who is, you know, they've always left outside the door. They get in the truck and they drive down the road. And that's their whole, that's their travel. Yeah. <laughs> and if they're going to really go far, they're going to drive to West Texas. And they're going to drive to West Texas. <laughs> yeah. No airplanes. So it's, that's, that's a different thing than, you know, a surgical center. Where like, who are they consulting with? And what is that, what is that like? And, and everything in between. Technology companies that have had far-flung teams anyway and they've yeah. flown people in and now the virtual experience goes up and so I, I think that managing leading communicating selling all that requires some real analysis to who who is our best customer who are our people how do they need to be communicated with because uh, there, re- there really are companies and cultures who this this didn't change much for them this was not much of a disruption. Most of their relationships were virtual anyway. Yeah. Their, their real human personal connections were like their family and their friends and local, and they didn't do that in the work world the same way that other companies like, this is kind of my family, and when I can't be in the room with my, my, my work people, I'm really at a disadvantage. And, and I think you got to figure out your recipe and, 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 and figure out how to expand and optimize it. And I don't think it's super obvious necessarily. You can't necessarily copy somebody else's use of technology and have it work that great for you. Agreed. Agreed. Well, we got 90 seconds. That time flew by. Yeah, man. So, uh, what I, I feel like I kind of wrapped it up there with the essence of that. What yeah, did we miss? Yeah. What do you want to, what do you want to bring us home with Brad? No, man, I think, I think technology, you got to embrace it, right? Figure out, uh, rather than, rather than fighting it, looking at it as an adder, not a detractor and figure out how can we utilize these platforms, this technology, um, to enhance the experience enhance our productivity, uh, and maybe even enhance the, the customer experience uh, moving yeah, forward. Absolutely. And, and engagement for all the people you work with, vendors, yeah. suppliers, employees, clients, and all that. And my yeah. main add to that from my personal perspective is uh, don't be surprised if it disrupts you. Don't be surprised if it takes more cycles to figure it out and it's uncomfortable. And you may need to embrace that for a few months before you get to the point where it works at, at the level of efficiency is you'd like it to, to have. Yes. That's it for this week. Yes? Yes. Okay. Well, we'll see you next time on Playing to Win with Mark and Brad. We'll see you then. Be well.